believe that we are here to be here as I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We want to thank God for this wonderful Sunday morning whereby we are here to give all the honor and praise unto him. I believe that we are all ready to worship him today, to praise him. Amen. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He, he, he knows everything. He knows everything about you. Whatever you are passing, He knows it. Amen. And He has already made a way. Glory be to God. So we, we just want to, to enter into prayer knowing that he, he is aware of everything that is coming before us. All the airships that are before us, He knows about them. So let us pray together as we commit this service into the hands of the Lord. Gracious Heavenly Father, we come to Thee, O Father, this end time morning. As we surrender, O Lord God, our ways, our lives, our thoughts unto Thee this morning, O Father. That, O Lord God, Jesus Christ, that sweet Holy Spirit that you promised, that wherever two or three are gathered, that anointing, oh Father, we know will be there. We want it to take preeminence. We don't want it, oh Father, to be stopped by our thoughts, our ways, our thinking. But we fully give in, oh Father, unto thee. Oh Lord God, that this morning, oh Father, may be such a morning that we will point to and say from that time something good happened, oh God. Father, we pray, oh Lord God, Jesus Christ, as we are committing and putting, oh Father, all the proceedings of this service unto thee, O Lord God Jesus Christ. That eyes, O Father, today of understanding can continue to be opened. That questions, O mighty Heavenly Father, can be answered, O Lord God. Situations and circumstances, O Lord Savior, that they may be turned around, O Lord God, where there is no life, we know that you are going to breathe life, O oh Father, to those situations. O oh Savior, we even pray, O oh Lord God, having confidence and trust, O oh Lord God, because even today we know that you, our Redeemer, you live it. O oh Father, you are alive even today. You promised, O oh Father, that even you will be with us unto the end of this world, O oh Lord God. We know that everything is under control. Like what Job said, O oh Father, when he said, I know that my Redeemer liveth. He saw, O oh Lord God, your resurrection. He saw, O oh Lord God, Jesus Christ, that everything was finished, O oh Father. Even today we know, O oh Lord God, but when you said it is finished, oh Father, you really meant it, oh God. Everything was done away with, oh Father. We come, oh Lord God, Jesus Christ. Still leaning, oh Father, and holding on to that resurrection, oh Father. Oh, we even pray for the same quickening power, oh Lord God, that raised you from the dead. That may it be amongst ourselves this morning. That it may quicken us, O Lord God, Jesus Christ. Father, that we may transcend, O Lord God, Jesus Christ. Beyond this flesh, beyond this earth, beyond this Babylon, O God. That we may meet with thee face to face. That we may talk with thee, commune with thee, have fellowship with thee today, O Father. you this morning as we pray oh father for our song leader our brother 
oh Lord God, who is ready to lead us into the singing of the songs of Zion. We pray that may you anoint him, may you lead him, oh God, that we may see your end, not the end of men, oh Father. Even when you shall come to preach unto us, may you anoint our, our ears, oh Father, circumcise them, that we will listen, we will be attentive, oh Father, to thy holy words. We even pray, oh Father, for our beloved pastor, that may you continue to strengthen him, may you continue to bless him, may you continue to lead and guide him, oh Father, that we may continue to benefit, we may continue, oh Lord God Jesus Christ, to be guided in thine own holy ways. Oh Father, we pray, surrendering everything, in the name of Jesus Christ, amen.
blessed assurance. Amen. In one of the quotations, the prophet says, he was being asked that, do you have insurance? And he said, yes, I have assurance. Amen. So I believe each and every one of you, you have got assurance for the uptaker. Amen. Blessed assurance. Thank 
Introduction, amen. Especially from the best guitar, amen. Chesua Kanaka, Chesua Chesua Kanaka, Chesua Kanaka, Chesua Kanaka.
Yena Indao is a corner. Amen. There is still room for you and me. Amen. song, then our special songs will come. Brother Mahlana, the first one, Sister Madrutu, then lastly, Brother Gift. Amen. Are we ready for the special songs? Amen. God bless you.
sing a song which says who am I amen sometimes we just feel unworthy to be the elected ones you you even wonder what you have done for God to love you so much amen so this song is just saying who are we that God has chosen us and has died for us amen God richly bless you I 
I could have done to deserve God's only Son that through an old rugged cross He would go
One more time, amen. <laughs> the waymaker is here this morning, amen. May you open doors even for your heart so that the weight can really get in, amen. Just say to your neighbor, don't go back without taking something from this place, amen.
this morning, amen. Glory be to God.
many believe it this morning? Healing rain is falling down. I just want you to open your heart. Trust in Him. Healing rain. While we are in this atmosphere, I want you to open your heart. You are the only person that knows what you're going through. The things you have been praying about. The things you are trusting God. His word has declared. And it cannot fail. Wherever two or three gather in this fashion. He said, they will I be in their midst. And I believe he is available to come down to your level to supply from his riches and glory whatever that you have need of. It can be sickness in your body. It can be depression, questions that you want God to come down and answer you. It can be a burden for your loved ones. It may be the Holy Ghost. Say, Lord, I've been in this way for too long, but I've never felt your touch to him. Even as I'm going to pray, I also want you to whisper something to open your lips, your heart, and present to him, seeing that his ear is inclined this morning to all thine petitions. He said, try me and see. Ask what you will in my name and it shall be given thee. If you knock, he said, I'll open the door. If you seek, you shall find me who cannot lie and who cannot fail. If your fathers who are evil know how to give you good gifts, that if you ask for bread, they do not give you stones. If you ask for fish, they do not give you snakes. So how much more your father in heaven will you not give you what you desire if your own father who is evil can give you what you desire? He is challenging your faith. He is challenging your condition. He is challenging your situation. He is challenging your problem. He is challenging the mountain that is before you. Saying, who art thou, O great mountain? Before Therubabel, thou shalt be made a plain. Oh, yes. Open your heart. Thank you, Lord. Lord. Won't you open the floodgates of heaven? Let it rain, Lord. prayer. Let it rain right in this place, Lord. Yeah, I'll cry. Won't you open, open the floodgates of heaven. Yes, let it rain. Let it rain, Lord. Let it rain. Dear Lord, in your presence we come. 
in humble adoration knowing you are alone a God you alone are worthy of all the praise before we even go far Lord we are not worthy to even stand before you we are men born in sin shaped in iniquity we come to this world speaking lies our thoughts they think evil continually without you our lips they speak things that we are not supposed to speak our actions they are not becoming of a people that have received this light but yet we say to whom shall we go you alone are God and the source of life that's why we run back to you even after we have fallen even after we have stumbled even after we are weak sick in our bodies and yet we know we deserve every bit of what we are in but still we run back to thee Lord because we know your arms are always wide open we hear your voice calling as it was in Eden Adam, Adam where art thou you are saying my pride my pride where art thou We are coming back. Back to the heart of worship. We are coming back. Back to our father's home where there is a place prepared for us. We are coming back home. Back where we can find stability in the midst of this Laodicean turmoil. We are coming back, oh God, back to repentance, back to humility, back to the place where we know as we went on. We are coming back by the help and power of Almighty God. All across the building, both visible and invisible, our hearts, lives, that are having faith upon this word this beaten path that you have laid before us saying this one thing be it unto us according to your word we look around the world our eyes cannot rest on anything just like that dove that was taken out of the ark just for a while it came back quickly because it was dead bodies everywhere and there was no place for it to lay down and father that's how we feel <laughs> like Elijah wherever we go whether it's at work at school in town wherever lord it's dead bodies everywhere indeed we can testify birds of nests foxes of holes but the bride has no place to lay down her head and father it tells us how close we are to that great translation because you have made a promise you are not going to leave us to be corrupted with this corruption as Christ was right there in the grave you said, I will not suffer to see my Holy One see corruption. And I believe your pride is in the grave of Babylon. It's in the grave of sin, the grave of the world. But we are believing that you shall not see, suffer to see your pride suffer corruption. Oh, take us out of this world, I pray. To that home where we long to be where we have preached about stood for even in this dimension of time 
not as cowards, Lord, but fearless with this lion anointing, with this eagle anointing, with this man and ox anointing, all in one. Because we know for such a time we were raised, for such an hour we were expressed. Oh, take over, I pray. Give the Holy Ghost to those that are yearning for the Holy Ghost. Give forgiveness of sins to those that are crying for forgiveness. Power to resist the devil to those that feel weak and worn and they need power from above. Wisdom to make the right decisions to those that are upon dilemmas. I pray, oh God, that you usher in your perfect will because you know exactly what we are going through. <laughs> but one thing for sure, Lord, we have this confidence. We have this faith that amongst all given to you by the Father, you shall not lose anyone. The certainty of our translation. Your prophet spoke and he showed us that you know what we are going through. In such a time, condition our souls, establish our lives, help us to be identified with the unfolding program. Seeing the pressure mounting upon the land, Help us to stand firm. To keep this testimony dear. Not to miss the mark. Not to be weary in well-doing. But Lord, to be consistent. Focused. <coughs> making sure our lamps are trimmed and clear. This is our prayer and our desire. After all is said and done, what will it profit us to gain the whole world and lose this promise of the translation? That is the ultimate. That's the reason of our existence. To be part of this great promise. Thank you, Lord God Almighty. As I surrender and commit everything into your hands. Thank you for the wonderful worship, the atmosphere that's been created. Take us further. In your word, you know what we're going through. Hide me behind the cross of Calvary. Let me not speak of my own. Undertake for me that I may be able to be a vessel through which you usher in your perfect will. It's my prayer and my desire. As I commit everyone into your hands, in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say amen. Hide me in your word Take me out of this world So take our sins I know it's so I can feel feeling and the conviction
give a mighty hand of praise. Let's repeat the name of the Lord. Lord, lift us up. Upon eagle wings, help us to stand where you have us to stand. in heaven on earth and underneath the earth I greet each and every one of you in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ how many are happy to be in the house of the Lord certainly give me a great privilege to be back the family believe that we are all under expectation and if we are under expectation it means we are in for a blessing he is never disappointed he is faithful he is generous when you look at where we are standing today it's all by his grace sometimes when you think about the grace that this message has given us tears can trickle down your eyes just to think about the magnitude of the blessing if you really understand what this message means and also what it means to be able to receive it. You are one in a million. And we thank God for that. We appreciate him so much. It's been uh, wonderful to be led throughout this season you know seasons they keep on changing <laughs> but we are never caught up in them you know God is always speaking and he's always turning corners on our behalf sometimes you know when God doesn't turn a corner for you you can be stuck up in a season and it's important to understand seasons they come they go and seasons are not meant to define who you are because they come and they go you, you understand that language we're just coming out of winter now but imagine if we don't turn a corner it means we'll be stuck in winter defined by winter you find people wearing jerseys under a blazing hot sun because nobody turned a corner for them there's time to cry there's time to rejoice there's time to plant there's time to cultivate and there's also time to harvest and it's all part of our lives the thing of it is we cannot be upon the same season at the same time that's why it's important to be connected to God so that he reveals to you his expectation over your life. Praise be to God. We've got people that are discouraged. Not because they are bad people, but they just pass through a rough season. And now they start to define themselves by that season. The way they behaved, the way they operated. But let me say, new things are always declared. Pray to God. God, turn a corner for me. 
that, that I may switch the season and be where you want me to be. You went to a new place. You, you, you lost your ground and your guard. Maybe, maybe you ended up in corruption. But you know who you are. You, you understand that? You, you just passed through a certain place. God is saying, come back to the rightful position and stand upon your credentials. Time is late. You must unfold as the word of God unfolds. Because you don't know at what time it will all be over. But be always unfolding with God. We want to appreciate the saints for standing with the Nechiunda family. Uh, the funeral went on well. We laid the mother to rest this morning. The grandmother will be laid to rest in the afternoon. So they will have a second service from 2 o'clock. So today, by God's grace, will be done by 1 o'clock so that those who want to be part of the second service can still go there and support by the grace of God Brahma Shudu is, one, is our own he's one of our brothers he's our minister <clears throat> and this is the time that he needs us most when things are this way but I'm, I'm, I'm just glad that the mother even though she was not a religious person not going to any church she was not going to church but in the last hours I think I got her first call on the 17th of June coming from the youth conference and then she explained the situation what she was going through but because I was driving I promised to call her later on and which I did later on and then I spoke to her and connected her with, to my wife for, for, for encouragement so that they could keep on communicating. Now, one thing for sure, when we started talking, she was a fearful woman. But in the process of time, I saw the fear come out. Remember the last time I went to a place, the last time she was at home. And we were praying for her. The emphasis was she must not be afraid no matter the situation. And her words were I'm not afraid because I believe there is a full church that is backing me up in prayer. And she was talking about you. And each time would come she would just glow, you know, she would just, even though she's sick, you can see that she feels the presence of, of God. <clears throat> and no doubt she was in pain. Like real, real pain. But one thing I salute and respect. If anybody wanted to pray for her, according to their faith, 
from different churches. She was denying to be prayed for. She said, if you want to pray for me, you must first call Pastor Mtasa. And if he confirms, then you can pray for me. And of course, you know, I would say, yeah, if somebody wants to pray, you can pray. But one thing she didn't want was anything outside prayer. And that touched my heart. Because sometimes when you are in pain, you can do anything. But even though she was in pain, she understood that her hope was only in prayer. And I believe even until the day she departed to be with the Lord, she was standing on that. She told Brahma Shudu that, you know, the first thing I want to do when I I leave this place is I'll buy you a suit and your wife a dress so that you witness my baptism. <laughs> In other words, she was ready to stand with this. The love the brothers showed, you know, throughout to stand with her. It was not easy, but he was there until the end. And, and we thank God that she went to be with the Lord in that condition. That was, that was his prayer. Brother Mashudu's prayer was that. You know, healing was another thing, but the heart of it was the soul must be saved. <clears throat> and what's more precious than that? Nothing, brother. Right now, she's in a better place looking at us. <laughs> Say, weep not for me. Hold fast to what you have. <laughs> that thing is very true. How many remember that thief on the cross? he never got a chance to be baptized but he was told today you shall be with me in paradise brother that's what God does and some people are caused to approach God in different ways and as if it was a coincidence but God's predestination the day I preached that sermon is the day I went to pray for him and I was telling a cost to approach God that God can use anything to bring that soul to him anything praise be to God I was fellowshipping with my wife and then she was saying you know it pleased God that he could die on the cross that our souls may be brought to him. And then she says to me, I believe also it pleased God that the body of Sister Nechunda Senior may go through what she went through so that her soul may be saved. And now the heart of it is what are you looking at? It's alright to cry in the flesh but there is greater joy when you look deep inside. Is it right? right? Blessed be the name of the Lord. I, I know the Nechundas are not hearing, but they will listen later and they will get this. We are grateful. Blessed be the name of the Lord. How many remember Sister Mariah? Sister Maria? I think we baptized at the same time we baptized you, Sister Miriam. 
But she went back to her church. But even though she was there, she would always connect with Sister Miriam to live stream services. She was baptized and she had a wonderful testimony amongst the people that she was working with because of the life that she was displaying. Look, she was also eating here but living life that side. But before she died, it was some months before, right? she had a dream and the dream she saw herself dead but when she crossed over she was asking where are the people of Branham I'm I'm, I'm the daughter of Pastor Mtasa I'm looking for the people of Branham where those are my people Now, now, now now When you listen to that language, remember, we spoke about illusion of validity in the valley of decision. These matters of the heart, you can't measure with the ruler. You can't calculate with the calculator. Neither can you weigh them upon a scale. These are matters of God. Who could believe that thief on the cross <laughs> would be on the other side. People that were killed under the order of Paul when he was so. They'll find him as one of the 24 elders. So, but that's the man who killed me. This God we are dealing with. His ways are past finding out. And I want to say to you as a church, be encouraged. Even with the sermon I have for today, let us just go a little bit deeper to understand what we have believed. So we are grateful. May her soul rest in peace. And then after service, those who can go and support you are most welcome. But we really thank the Lord so much. I want to welcome a visitor here. This Chivasa Simon. I'll ask him to stand. All right. God bless you. You're, you're welcome in our midst. We're not a denomination. Neither we an organization. We have no law but love. No creed but Christ. No membership but fellowship. And no book but the Bible. So if you believe in the word, you automatically become a part of us. Praise be to God. So God bless you. And I trust he has got something special for you. I see, I see Brother Kastler and family. Brother Kastler, God bless you so much. We're happy to, to have you around. You know, they they don't feel like they're not visitors. <laughs> you know, there are people that when they come, they're just home. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes you'd find us maybe on a tent or doing something. He doesn't wait to be told what to do. You find him on the corner telling people where to sit, everything. <laughs> and and, and we, we love that. And we appreciate the lovely family. I see the kids as well. God richly bless you. Mm, the sister as well. And uh, the kids are growing. Eh? Did they sing for us today? They must sing for us, eh? By the grace of God. When are you going back? They'll be remaining. So we'll hear them, right? Lovely. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Yeah. So these are the children of the Machevas, eh? Praise the Lord. So Sister Macheva, she's having her family, <laughs> 
We appreciate that. So today, by God's grace, I don't intend to take much time. Now, maybe I can use this time to clarify myself. <laughs> um, I can preach very short. Very, very short. I'm sure those who have gone out with me, they know what I'm talking about. 15 minutes is more than enough. I would have proved my point and I would be done. Because I know what I want to say. But you must know that I'm a pastor to this church. I'm not here for entertainment. No, 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 no develop. So I'm, I'm not going to try to preach as if I'm, I'm just out there to. You understand what I mean? I, cu- I cultivate. I repeat. I emphasize so that everyone, the weak, the young, the old, may understand what we are saying. But if you want to see that I can preach short than everyone, anyone here, any minister. Find me out there and then you know what I'm talking about. I think the time Brad Freddy repented. They, they had given me 15 minutes in the morning, right? Yes, so I, I spoke to them for 15 minutes only. They said it's 15 minutes. And that was enough for people to make decisions. So I'm trying to show you what we can do. But when we take long, you must understand there is a cause. And I'm not apologetic. And don't make me feel apologetic as well. So, but for today, you, you, we, 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 you, you are going to witness one of those. Praise be to God. I'm not saying it's 15 minutes. But I'm saying by one we be done. So I'm, I'm going to invite your attention um, to a couple of scriptures. God bless you, musicians. All right, I, I just want us to read just a portion so that we sit down. Now, Nehemiah 1, chapter 2, verse 2. So, no, Nehemiah, you told me. Let's read from verse 1. Kari, the kari. words of Nehemiah, the son of Akalia, and it came to pass in the month of Chislu in the 20th year as I was in Shushan the palace. Mapungo anemia murwa wa akarwa. Gangwezi wa kisileve gangwa wa mahumi maviri wa mubuso wa aritasita ndoba ndi mudini wa musanda wa susani and anani one of my brethren came and uh, came he and certain men of judah and i asked them concerning the jews that had escaped which were left out of captivity and concerning jerusalem hambo da hanani mungwe wa bahashu and Ena munna beba bva kala yuda. Ndaba budzisa manea aba yuda beba buyerera hayani vesarera zamatuda na Yerusalem. Now we're talking about the escaped ones. Rorkwambanga abo botinyao. And um, the people that were left. Abatu beba sara. You can call them the remnant as I'll expound in my first slide. Now, 
I want us to come to Jeremiah. Zino ndikoto da richiaka Jeremiah. Praise the Lord. Mzimu karendi. Chapter thirty-two. Jeremiah ndima ya thirty-two. Um, verse 36 says, And now therefore that says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning this city, whereof ye say it shall be delivered into the hand of the kingdom, the king of Babylon, by the sword and by the famine and by the pestilence. Behold, I'll gather them out of all the countries, whither I have driven them in mine anger and in my fury and in great wrath, and I'll bring them again unto this place. And I'll cause them to dwell safely. Zino na oso raro Yehovah muzimu wa Israeli o amba unomu de are. Woku mezeru azandani zokosi ya babel ngapfumo nandara na duaze udova are ngango ne ndi dova kubanganya baba mashangoni onte enda wa pandera kau ndo sinu ndo birufara ndo ore rangambit. And they shall be my people, and I'll be their God, and I'll give them one heart and one way, that they may fear me forever for the good of them and for the children after them. And I'll make an everlasting covenant with them that I will not turn away from them to do them good, but I'll put my fear in their hearts and they shall not depart from me. Are you listening to this language? I'll put my fear in their hearts that they shall not depart from me. Now may the Lord add blessing to the reading of his word. Let, let's take our seats. Now, I think from these two accounts, you can see the similarity of shadow and type. God bless you, Brother Matawa. Family. Praise the Lord. Now, from this part of the scriptures, we want to draw an influence that relates to our season. So, for a subject, it's Living unafraid. And for a subheading, it's still the escaped ones in the bright age. Now, when you talk about living unafraid, this is just something that's more than language or vocabulary. Fear is a reality. And fearlessness is a reality. It's beyond expressions. Expressions of boldness. It is something that is in a man. Or in a woman. And now... As we connect this with the escaped ones, God is taking us to a place where we can live unafraid. Because the escaped ones, as I'm going to summarize just quickly, like the slide I gave, you can just bring it the way it is. One by one. Now we saw the escaped ones in the time of Ezra. 
These are the people we read in the book of Nehemiah. These are people that escaped mystery Babylon. I call it mystery Babylon because the Median Persian kingdom it was the same Babylon but under a different name. He's a writer. Just like when we find the Vatican today. It is the same Roman Empire but now in a different garment, a religious garment. So the first escaped ones we see from the book of Ezra, they were escaping from the clutches of success. The clutches of success. Fariwa. The clutches of success. Because they were promised plenty. They were promised to be businessmen business women without disruption. They were given ability to worship their God even in a foreign land. So it was not an easy thing to walk away from prosperity and plenty. He's a writer. That's why we call them escaped ones. They actually escaped. Because who can walk away from money? <laughs> Praise be to God. The reason why certain people remain in denomination because it's connected to money. It's connected to success. It's connected to prosperity. It's connected to power, position. And this is what they escaped from. Power, position, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Then we find the second group that escaped was in the time of Titus. Now in the time of Titus, Jesus had promised and he had prophesied that the time shall come when armies shall encamp around Jerusalem. And when that happens, if you are on the rooftop, don't go inside to get your jacket run away. If you are in the field, run away. If you are in the house, just go out. You are trying to show that there is no time for another transaction. Another business transaction. When you just see them in campering, run away. Because judgment is impending. And we know there are people that managed to escape. And others did not escape. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And what happened? They were destroyed. But these were the escaped ones. They were escaped ones. Praise be to God. God bless you. I see our neighbor here. Good to see you. And the kids as well. Amen. Now, the escaped ones again, we find them in the time of Sardis. Sardis is actually called, the definition of Sardis is escaped ones. Now, these were people that were escaping the brutality and subtlety of the Roman Empire. He's a writer. I'm, I'm sure you know the history. So under Martin Luther, they escaped 
such is age. And we also saw the escaped ones under Revelation 10.7 with Malachi 4. From the first grip of the Catholic upon the United States of America. And when they escaped, William Branham was alive. And the time of escape, it is the time the prophet thought he was the only one left. Like Elijah of old. That all the people have been killed. And I'm the only one left. But, but God came and he said to Elijah, there are 7,000 that have not bowed down. They'd escaped from Jezebel. And even in the time of William Branham, they'd escaped from Mystery Babylon. People that were being killed by misinterpreted theology. The sword, which is the word. And the last group is in the bride age. Under Revelation 10, 8 to 11. Under the second group of the Catholic upon the entire global village. When you look around, it appears as if everybody is dead. But God has a remnant. And that remnant are the escaped ones. And I believe you are part of that number. A people that have escaped from the clutches of mystery Babylon. But now this time, the clutches were talking about the clutches of success. There is impending judgment. There is brutality and subtlety of Rome. There is the first and second grip of the Catholic upon the whole world. Because we are under the fourth seal. White, black, and red are all in one. So this is the greatest escape that human race has ever experienced. Because the whole of hell is upon the land to make sure you are taken. Now, 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 I want you to pay attention closely so that you may understand. We are living in a time where every work is being tested. Tested by fire. We are living in a time where every ministry is being tested. Tested by fire. We are living in a time where every individual is coming to the hour of temptation. That it can be proven what you are made out of. Because this translation is about to go. So God has to prove he has to prove who belongs to him and who doesn't belong to him. And this is the falling away that the Bible says there shall be a falling away first. Because it will be an hour of temptation. And there are so many things that the devil will use to test. He's going to use money. He's going to use women. He's going to use prosperity. He's going to use everything that he can hold. But everything is happening under the allowance of the Holy Ghost. God wants to see the reaction. How you behave in such circumstances when, when, when no one is pressurizing you. When you are relaxed. God, God wants to see your attitude. He also wants to see your attitude when you are 
are pressurized, when you are in fire, when, when, when you are given money, when you get a promotion, when he wants to see how you behave. Because in the process of it, that's where the escaped ones will come out. And brother, it's happening, but the world does not recognize it. People look at it as ordinary tests. It is that final preparation to the translation. And trust me, it's happening upon the entire global village. The temptations may not be the same, but everyone is having their fair share, their portion of trials. And how you come out at the end is what to determine the ultimate verdict. But in such a time, God is expecting us to live unafraid. Unafraid. You see that? Now, let's talk about fear. I'm, I'm going to define fear. Now, in the scripture, fear is used to express two things. With what we call a filial. You're talking about something that is parental, something that is a, a, a bond that is, that is biological. So is, is that fear that is connected to relationship? That is connected to, to, to love, to reverence, to, to, to true humility and submission. When you talk about slavish passion, you're talking about that Fear, which is not original. It is a fear that is caused by circumstances. Maybe fear of judgment, fear of death, or a problem that can come your way. Now, now this one, it has no relationship. It is more like somebody trying to save their own life. You understand that? So in the Bible, those are the types of fears that are defined. Now, in good men, in good men, good men, the fear of God is a holy awe of reverence of God and his laws, which springs from a just view and real love of the divine character leading the subjects of it to hate and shun everything that can offend such an holy being. I've been understanding this language. It's springing from a just view and real love of the divine character. and the real love of the divine character. Leading the subjects of it to hate and shun everything that can offend such an holy being. And inclining them to aim at perfect obedience. This is what we call filial fear. We read it in Jeremiah 
I will put my fear in their hearts. Now, that's not the fear of judgment. It's a fear that is connected to real love of that divine character, real reverence. But when you come to Romans 8, it speaks of slavish fear. Is the writer the one that brings guilt and fear for punishment? Fear, like in First John chapter four, that the love of God, perfect love, casteth away all fear. This is the fear that we are talking about. Now, now, watch what's happening here. For you to live unafraid, you must have this fear of God. I don't know if you're understanding that. <laughs> when we say living unafraid, you are not afraid of the things that intimidate the world. Allow me to take off my jacket. Now, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. That slide, please. Praise be to God. Now, Proverbs 1, 7. Maybe just the scripture before we come to this. The Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Proverbs 1, 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. So now here we are talking about that fear again. Filial fear. It is the beginning of knowledge. Wisdom. Is a writer. Now, now, how does it come to that? When you fear God, there is room for wisdom. Because God has access to both soul and spirit. Now, there is knowledge and there is wisdom. Wisdom is the application of knowledge. And now, both soul, I mean, body and soul access to that, right? You can correct that. Now, watch that. Now, there is a knowledge, brother, that is intellectual. You get it because of age, time, studying. But there is another knowledge that is beyond this dimension. You don't get it by time. You don't get it by age. It's like that which Christ had at 12 years old. It's that which Peter had, though a fisherman and illiterate. It's that which John the Baptist had, though he could not even sign his name. That knowledge and wisdom is from above. It's different. Today, if you can sit and you're asked to debate with a homosexual or a lesbian, you realize that you don't have points. Brother, those guys, they've got points. All you have is faith. <laughs> and with faith comes that knowledge with wisdom. We are not meeting the devil upon intellectual basis. The moment you do that, you are defeated. Eve in her perfection, she tried that. She was deceived. 
You are not even perfect as Eve. And you think you can outsmart the devil with reasoning. No church can do that. But there's this wisdom, brother. This knowledge. It's from humility. It's so simple. But it's great. That when they listen to you, they'll ask, which theological school is this? Because they can't understand. They've never read it in their books. But yet God has entrusted your lips to be the source of such knowledge and wisdom. It comes from the fear of the Lord. And now according to John 8 verse 36, the Bible says, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Now, that knowledge, that wisdom is God, it's Christ, it is the truth. And when you fear God, you get Christ. It is the beginning of walking with Christ. The fear of the Lord. And now, when you know him, the truth, it will make you free. Now, brother, when you talk about a free person, it's a person who is living unafraid. <laughs> when you are free, you are not afraid. Freedom and fear cannot go hand in hand. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. People can say Africa is free. But if you check, Africa is afraid. What they carry today is mental slavery. Even though they are no longer under the imperialist control, but mentally, Africans are being controlled they are by fear. They, they are enslaved. But the people have no confidence. And at all. They have no confidence in what and who, in who they are. Today, as we speak right now, every person who's jobless, they are jobless because they are afraid. They don't believe they can do something for themselves by themselves. Let me tell you something. There is no dunderhead on earth. A dunderhead is the person that says there is a dunderhead. Because they don't know, brother. We are different. I don't need to be a mathematician to be successful. I don't need to be a scientist to be successful. I don't need to be a historian to be successful. We are, we are, we are carved differently. There are people that can use their hands until when you look at what they do, you ask yourself, was this done by a machine? That person is no metric. That, you know, actually, I don't know why Africans are slow. Do you know the educational system in Europe? America, to be precise. How many remember when I preached the Sputnik moment? Did you see the educational system was transformed? Yes. They, they ended up saying, we don't need a child to reach grade 12 to know whether they are going to succeed in life or not. That's the predicament, brother. All our children are waiting for grade 12. Grade 12 is their judgment. To say you are a fool or you are wise. You succeed or you fail. Why, why wait for grade 12? How many things can be done before grade 12? So what the Americans did, they went to Russia. They started their educational system. And they began to introduce vocational work, vocational training. Imagine if your child leaves school at grade 10. 
is a writer. And then they go and study something to do what with what they like. They start welding great ten. Not studying history, brother. Welding, welding. Because this child wants to be an engineer. They, they leave grade 10. They start to focus. Think about your child leaving school at grade 10. Starting to understand the foundation of law. Grade 10. By the time they reach grade 12, they're already employable. They're not waiting to be judged. By the results of grade 12. That's how America reformed. And ended up with innovation. But look at us. We are free, but we have mental slavery. I want to repeat this statement again. Every jobless person is fearful. We are all God never created you a dunderhead. What is it that you can do? Do that. What is in your hands? Do that. You're waiting for approval. From who? You're waiting for assurance. Who has to give you that assurance? Uh, they must give us jobs. There are no jobs in South Africa. Who must give you the job? We, under which agreement? Uh, isn't it? Uh, they must give us jobs. Why don't you give them jobs? Also? What, what if they respond and say, you are not fair? Why do you say you blame us? Uh, the job? Who said, where is it written that the white man must give you a job? You are abusing people. Somebody say amen. amen. Living unafraid. Bear with me, my computer is off. I'm just trying to switch on my slide. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, are we together, friends? Let me show you, maybe one by one, where I think the world is. Everybody is afraid. Now, back to that slide. Yes, we have it right here. It's only that mine is off. Eh? All right, now. Nations are afraid. Fearing other nations. The fear of other nations. You want security economically. Partner with China. You want security politically. Partner with USA. You want security militarily. Partner with Russia. You want to be poor. Partner with Africa. And it's sad to hear that. You get the point. But I want you to see the fear of other nations. People are looking for peace. Security. In politics. In economics. With, with religion. If you want security religiously, you, you partner with the Vatican. So everybody wants that kind of security. But, but watch that. When we say living unafraid, this is not how you deal with fear. He says fear you not 
not their fear. When you don't fear their fear and you fear the Lord, you're going to operate unafraid because you know your food doesn't come from China. Your security is not with America or Russia. Neither your worship connected to the Vatican. You realize you are connected to Christ, the lifeline. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Somebody say Amen. You know, indeed the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. One proof that this message is true. It is able to take away fear. Amen. You know, I, I think that is the most fascinating thing about the message of the hour. For me, yeah. the most fascinating thing yeah. is that you are not intimidated by anyone or anything. Okay, we are coming to it. Firstly, we talk about the fear of other nations. Is that right? Are, are, are we together? Fear of other nations. Do you have that? Fear of the government. Now you see, from international fear, countries, we've got also national fear, where people are afraid of the government. And you know what I'm talking about. When Ramaphosa says, look down, everybody looked down. He was, he was winning, he was treading on your fear. I mean, people was, we, we were walking. We, we, you know, let's say Ramaphosa never said anything. Brother, the streets will be filled with people. But the day the president says, no walk, it's like that virus is moving in the streets with the master saying, I'm here. Bra, bra, you can take my towel from the office. You can bring it for me. Now, now do, do you see what we're talking about? It, it is fear of the government. To a point that the government will enact laws. And as we speak right now, there are bills that are waiting to be passed. That will speak against the church. In terms of same sex life partnerships. As we speak right now, we, we, these things are in the pipeline. That pastors are going to be forced to marry a man. With another man. But how can a husband have a husband? These people are <laughs> undermining our intelligence, actually. I don't know that Prime Minister said, I'm thankful today I'm with my husband. Amen. Yes. Oh, he said my husband is not with me or something. I don't know what he said. A man saying my husband. They're undermining our intelligence. But the fear of the government is going to cause people to comply. Churches to comply. Pastors to comply. Check what happened in, in, in Babylon. It was only Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that denied. What about other ministers? You tell me there were no ministers, no priests. You tell me there were no people. Brother, all of them were worshippers. But because of the fear of the government, they found themselves bowing down to the image. And soon it's coming on us. It's coming, brother. It's really coming. And God wants to see your reaction. That test is coming. And it will be very soon. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But if you fear the government, you see the thing. That is what will happen. Business of the eternity. We fear of the church. Some people are told, if you leave this church, you die. 
So when you see them holding on to a church, it's not like they really love the pastor. They are told, if you just leave, it's not spoken, some they speak publicly, of course, but some secretly, if you leave this church, you are dead. Now, with all due respect, you don't die when you leave the church. You die when you leave the word. And when you leave the word, even though the church loves you, you still die. Did you hear that? Somebody say amen. International fear. National fear, church fear, and we are fear of men, people that fear rejection. They live to please men. You get the point. And people that fear rejection, you find that these are people that are easily afraid of superstitions. Superstitions, things that don't exist. Is it a writer? Do you know witchcraft is only alive when you allow it to live? How many people have family members here? That are always saying we are being bewitched. And when you stop listening to it, what happened? It stopped existing. But to them, it's like every day, brother. They are being bewitched at work, at school, everything. And really, they are being bewitched. Because it's as a, it's only a life as much as you allow it to live. So if they are afraid of that, it happens. Happens. But if you close your ears, I fear is not for people that are busy, brother. <laughs> Even witchcraft, it's not for people that are busy. You must have enough time <laughs> for you to be bothered by witches. Because you have to focus, you have to concentrate, you have to believe it. Even some of the things that are not making sense, that it was a red that was in my house, and that red was a shokoloshi. And the, you, you must have enough time to really dissect. And in the roof, it was like this. And at that time, we did this, and it went boom, boom. And, just to join those things, brother. It needs time. But if you don't have time, you can't be bothered by those things. It's like critics, brother. You only hear critics when you're not busy. <laughs> but when you become busy, you, you don't even have time. You'll be told after a year that, do you know you were once criticized by this? <laughs> so really? I'm, even, I'm sorry I didn't see it. I'm sorry. <laughs> they could, I'm sorry. Because <sighs> you know why you apologize? Because criticism is also valueless if it's not attended to. Yeah. <laughs> So you'll be apologizing that, ah, they wasted their time. It, it didn't reach me. So, if you're on the work of God, busy upon the work of God, you have no time for all these things. They don't reach to where you at. Praise be to God. That's fear of man. And then lastly, fear in you. Fear of things like sickness itself. We spoke about international. We came to national. We went to church. We came to men. Other men. Now we're talking about fear in you, brother. You know, there are people that fear to die. That they can do anything to save their lives. They can bath with blood <laughs> from a sangoma because they fear to die. You can laugh, but these are real things. There are people that fear to die, that they can do anything, anything, not to die. And the devil rides on that. So if you check all these fears, 
the ultimate thing is people don't want to die. <laughs> they fear to die. No, no, that's where now you find the difference between us and the world. The reason we live unafraid it is because we don't fear death. Brother, if you don't fear death, uh, nothing can shake you. Can we talk right now? Can we talk? Sister, brother, if God says you die today, what's your reaction? Panic. Oh, my children, but what about this? Hey, you start to run everywhere. Oh, my, my, the money I left. Oh, why did I save that money? I should have used it. Oh, my car, my house. If God say you die today, what is your reaction? Don't, don't, don't speak loud. Think. Just think yourself. Say, if I die, if God says I won't, I won't live up to tonight. You panic until that time of death. Eh? You be just trying to touch this. You leave this. You touch this. I thank God that I'm a believer of the message of Malachi 4. You never chose to come to this life. Why do you want to choose the time you live? And how you live this. Master this. You have mastered life. Nothing can move you. When Paul said, death, where is your sting? Grave, where is your victory? When he said, to live is for Christ, to die is gain. Brother, that man had mastered life. When you master life, in this fashion, you don't even become stingy. You don't become selfish. You don't live for your. You live for everybody. When, when you've come to this place, you use your life for other people. You give it to the people. That's why I say to live is only for Christ. But to die is gain. Your gain. Your gain. Meaning your life is somebody else's gain. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Pastor, these things are not for kids, Pastor. I'm hearing somebody. Don't talk about death. I'm still young, Pastor. I, I still want to enjoy. <laughs> you know, stress <laughs> is because of fear. You are afraid. That's why you are filled with stress. I don't know. At the, Where do you think your fear comes from? Now, when you talk about the characteristics, the vulnerabilities of a fearful person, you can't be honest. You can't express your full potentials. And you can always compromise. Because you are searching for reassurance. But God is trying to bring you to a place where you can live unafraid. But how is he doing it? He's doing it by making you defeat the greatest of it all. The thing that made, that makes everybody fear. Somebody say amen. Are we together? Blessed be the name of the Lord. I'm going to close soon. My problem is I'm trying to get my notes. But don't worry, I'll work with them or without as we see. Now, Christ is the foundation. 
How many believe that Christ is the foundation? Listen to what Brother Branham says. Now, oh, you send it to me. Thank you so much. Now, there's a great thing that this America is trying to build upon. It's trying to build upon the foundation of popularity. <clears throat> young girls, young boys, they look at the television stars, movie stars, try to act like them, dress like them, impersonate them. What does it do? It leads to a ruined life of chaos. It stubbles off hay which will be burned at the judgment. It's, it stubbles off hay which will be burned at the judgment. It's hay. Is that right? Jesus is the only foundation. The only sure foundation. That's the reason we should come to him. Nobody else has that foundation. Riches. Riches don't have it. Riches, riches don't have it. Popularity doesn't have it. And today we've got so much building foundation. Building foundation. All we want, American people, just can't do enough. American people just can't do enough. Sunday, they got to build a fence. They got to do this. What are you doing? You realize your, your, your building is going to be, to, to be, to be blowed to bits pretty soon. <clears throat> the, that foundation is crumbling sense. Many of us is building upon education. We can't even get teachers, you know, going to school. We, we, we're talking about it. Is it right? We can't even get teachers. Going, going to school, we, you know. Now, you know going to, it's all right, but school is all right in its place, but... It will never take the place of Christ. You know, there are people that are trying to deal with the thirst of God in a wrong way. Now, we, we can't even get teachers our teenagers are so rough. Two people won't even try to teach them. Little Oswald and Les and all of them. Oswald, Les and all of them. They run the teachers out of the building. They'll set up a protest. They'll strike. They'll close up the school. I don't blame them. I wouldn't be a school teacher either. If I could get out of it. We were talking about education. Uh, teachers, you know what we are talking about, right? Hmm? Oh, it's not happening. 
No, no, that's all right. Education. We don't want a bunch of illiteracy. But we want education in its place. But the trouble of it is today, we try to educate our pulpits. And when we did, we took the way out. And Christ is that foundation. And that way, and we put education. Education is all right. But listen, many times education leads to the demon of education. Demon of education, you know it. And that demon of education leads you to a know-all. And when you get there, then you become an infidel and deny Christ, an unbeliever. And deny Christ. So you can't build upon the foundation of education. Neither can we build upon political powers. You say, well, I'm so interested. I'm a Democratic. I'm a Republican. You know, both parties is rotten. Both both parties are rotten. There is only one foundation. Build upon Christ. This nation don't need to build upon any other foundation but Jesus Christ. No other foundation is laid. No other foundation you can get to on heaven. To heaven on. No other foundation you can get to heaven on. No other foundation is secure. But the foundation of Jesus Christ. You know, when Christ is your foundation, you are not afraid of politics. The meaning of Calvary. And Satan can do nothing about it. Because you've got a hold of a line. A lifeline that's anchored in the rock of ages. Nothing can shake you from it. No winds can shake you from it. Nothing, not even death itself, can separate us from the love of God. That's in Christ Jesus. That's what Calvary meant. Men that were in bond were set free. Men that were once under fear of death can no longer fear death. A man who longs for a city whose builder and maker is God, he can step on the highway and set his face towards heaven because he's free. He said, hallelujah, he's redeemed. He don't need to wonder no more. For there is a way of knowing whether you are right or not. God gives us life. Our sins are gone. That dead Calvary paid the price. And when you see all that, no wonder the poet wrote, the poet wrote, Mari. Mid rendering rocks and darkening skies. My Savior bowed his head and he died. The opening veil revealed the way to heaven's joy. And endless day. Are you with me next, God brother? Are you with me? No, no, did you see this? You no longer fear death. But you see where it's connected to. The veil was opened. Now, the meaning of Calvary, if you did not know, when he said it's finished, 
And if you have received that day of Calvary, what it means, you can live unafraid. Calvary is like you, you are having a pet of a tiger. You have a pet of a tiger. A pet, a pet. Your pet is a tiger. And then you are living in a world of people with dogs. You get the point? You, you, you are walking with a tiger on a leash. A big tiger. And other people have dogs for pets. Can you be afraid when you are walking? A tiger can kill 50 dogs, you know, once. You understand that? Calvary, brother. <laughs> when you're walking with the understanding of Calvary, if there's anything you're afraid of, please come to my office. I'm very curious to know what it is. I would really want to understand what you're afraid of. If you are still afraid, it means you have not accepted or understood what that day of Calvary means. Brother, I'm not preaching. I'm talking. This is reality. If you don't have it, you don't have it. If you have it, you have it. Can I repeat again? If you are going to die today, is it amen? Or is panic? Let's go. There's no more guessing about it. Abraham don't have to wander no more. Across the country seeking a city. I mean, he saw Theophany. Will you look for another city? He met Melchizedek and he saw the body that he was going to go to. So he stopped looking for another city because <coughs> he so knew Jerusalem. Now, brother, when you see the depth of this message, when you are lifted up in revelation, you are not going to seek for comfort anywhere else. Whether you are in one room, or a double story or a triple story that makes no difference because you have met something greater if you have met with Melchizedek you become content in circumstances that you don't even understand in a prison with hunger rejected you enjoy and you are content the sinner don't have to wander anymore. <clears throat> whether he can be saved or not. The sick man don't have to wonder whether he can be healed or not. The opening veil on that day on Calvary. Reviewed the way to the total victory. God give us the powers of his spirit to live triumphantly over all these things victoriously. Ask us only to believe it. That happened on that day at Calvary. There never was a day like it. There never will be one like it. It's not necessary no more. The price is paid. And we are redeemed. Thanks be to God. We are redeemed. There is no more. You have to wonder about. There is no more guessing about it. It all took away. The veil put back the curtain and we are set on a highway. Not to wonder anymore. But to believe and just walk right on. We walk right into God's very presence. Oh my. <coughs> I don't know, brother. <laughs> With all this, what can make you fear? 
I don't know. Because it's not guessing, brother. It's paid. Brother Manga, it's paid. The devil is late. This can be undone. We can be redefined. Living unafraid is this understanding. Yes, you are human. You are subject to emotions. But there is a knowledge by the fear of the Lord that makes you live unafraid. Because you are realizing you are an escaped one. You, you have escaped the clutches of Babylon. Your influence, your way of operation is not in line with the standards of this life. Can you say amen? amen? Let's say you die tonight. What would be your behavior? I'm keeping asking you this question. Because look, <laughs> if you are seeking to save your life, it means you don't know who gave that life. Instead of saving your life, serve, serve, instead of saving your life, <laughs> to save your life, yeah. you must serve your purpose. That should be the thing that, that you're worried about. Not to save your life, but to serve your purpose. <laughs> You are not fit to live until you are fit to die. Yeah. So if that question, if you die today, is bothering you, as you are saying, Pastor, don't just speak these things, Pastor. It means you are not fit to live. Desperations. Desperation. Signs of his coming should throw every member of Christ into desperation now. I repeat, desperation, signs of his coming should throw every member of Christ into desperation now about our souls, our welfare for year after. Well, well, what are we going to amount to if we gain the whole world? What are we? What are we living for? What do you work for? What are you eating for? What are you struggling for? To live. Brother, it's fear. If, if the prophet is putting it in another way, he's asking you, why are you going to work? Why are you eating? Why are you struggling? You are afraid. It's fear. That's why you are not, it's fear. You want to leave. It says, what are you living for? To die. So your struggles, your work, your everything, you want to leave. Why do you want to live? So that you just die. Now listen to what he says. And you are not fit to live until you are fit to die. It's true. So you see the question. When you are living unafraid, you're not worried about how many years you're going to live. You are worried about how well you are living that life. As an escaped one, you are given access. William Branham was lifted and he met with his theophany. Elijah under the juniper tree, he was visited by God. You understand that? The bride 
under this season of escape we 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 must be lifted the heart of the message is we have to be lifted up to connect with our angel our theophany and when you meet with that body you are not going to look for another city you are going to live unafraid because you know if you die if this body is dissolved the one you saw who be waiting for you eternal in the heavens you are living unafraid because you are the escaped one not from a denomination you have escaped from the entire system of satan and you are lifted into the order of melchizedek and because of that you live unafraid the Lord bless you as the musicians come. Praise be to God. How many love the Lord? How many see this? How many would want this life? We are not afraid of anything. It starts by the fear of the Lord. When you fear him, you will not be afraid of anything else. But if you don't fear God, revere God, you even fear witches, leaves that are rattling on the graveside. You fear everything because you don't have the fear of the Lord. But I'm introducing you to that in such a time as this. Be lifted up and be connected to Melchizedek. With our heads bowed. Stay in line. the 
sacred sense. All your sacred sense. Hour of trials. Stay in line. There is a portion. An anointing. An anointing to project and pick up on. Pick up that word. Unction. Unction to function. This junction. Stay in line. Sister, be strong, brother. Be the strong, all the way. Oh, all the way. There is a purpose for everything. yet escaped until you connect with the angels you have not yet escaped until you are lifted up 
John, James, and Peter, Mount Transfiguration, Mount Sunset. In 23, you must be lifted up to connect with something supernatural. And when you come down, brother, you have the fear of the Lord, filial. And with that fear, you will live unafraid of anything in this life. Daniel could not compromise. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego too. John could not compromise. William Branham as well. The hour is upon you. Every work shall be tested. Every man shall be tested. This is how you overcome. Making sure you're living unafraid. Connected to that revelation. Gracious Heavenly Father, I pray for every heart, every person under the influence of this voice. I'm praying for those that need this prayer and even those that think they don't need it. Everyone that is just under the influence of this voice, I pray for a special grace, a special anointing. You say there's an anointing lotted for every age. I pray for that unction to function with whatever that is going to be for us as individuals and as a bride. You say your perfect love casteth away all fear. Take away this corrupted fear and give us the true fear that we can live unafraid. Because that's the only way we can stand all the way and stay in line. Thank you for this inspiration. Thank you for your simplicity. Maybe some who understand better by and by. But now that you have come in this way, we know this is not a joke. There's a reality that is before us. You taught us through your prophet that each time we hear the word fear not, it means something is just about to come. He's preparing us. And I pray that you prepare us much more, much more, much more. This church, I also pray for every other ministry, people that are standing upon the message of Malachi 4, with the turbulence that will come. I pray for pastors, evangelists, to post everybody in the fivefold ministry. Pray for every assembly that has opened their heart to the message of Malachi 4. Preserve them, I pray. We know it will not be an easy moment, but with you, we will be unafraid. Strengthen our hands. We commit the nature wound of family into your hands. Cover them by your blood. And as we have come to the end of our service, help us to hold fast to what we have heard. Till we meet again, as the song says, stay in line. That's our prayer. You said whatever we ask, you grant. And we are asking the grace to stay in line. Let it be. We ask it. In Jesus' name. And everybody say amen. Stay in line.
faith that it's come. There is a purpose. Let's give a hand of praise. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He's worth you for the glory. He's worth you for the honor. Amen and amen. Praise be to God. God richly bless you, friends. We've come to the end of our service. God bless you, invisible audience. We meet again on Tuesday. Come pray it up under expectation. Then those who are going to the nature wounders, don't delay much outside. You need roughly about 30 minutes and you'll be there if you leave instantly. Till we meet again, let's rise to our feet. Now just turn around and shake the person next to you so that we don't queue. Say, God bless you, brother. Say, God bless you, sister. I want to say, strengthen my hands for war with my key. Yeah.